Hello, and welcome to a special episode of the Knitting Traditions podcast. Today, I'm going to be going through all of the garments, yeah, garments that I knit in 2022. I know I'm a bit late and everyone has been posting these videos. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to. I had done some recording of me wearing the items that I made last year, but then I didn't have everything here because some of it was at the cabin. Um, so, but I, I was at the cabin uh, yesterday and I brought some of them home, so I figured I'd make this episode and if anything, it'll be a nice recap for myself to look back on, like a little knitting diary. If you're new here, hello, my name is Inga, I'm a knitter, I live on the west coast of Norway, I work as a doctor, on my free time I knit whenever I have some spare time, I like to go skiing and hiking, traveling, eat good food, drink coffee and tea, all the things. Um, if you're returning, welcome back, thank you so much. Uh, you might have seen all of these things before if you've been watching me. Um, if not, here's a little recap of all the things. And I am wearing the... I don't know what to call it. I used the decreases of the wash cap hat by Pearl Soho, which is a free pattern. And I used some yarn that I bought in Turkey, which is like a chunky yarn. It's quite thick. And I'm also wearing the Turtle Dove by Espas Tricot, a free pattern that I used um, Drops Air for. I decided just to wear something white as a palette for you guys as I'm showing all of these things. So I made a little list to cheat. Um, and the first item that I finished, finished <laughs> words, Sorry, I just got home from work and I'm battling with daylight to record this for you guys. Um, the first sweater that I made last year was the Ranunculus by Midori Hirose. And I used wool in it for ply, uh, their British wool, on a cone in the color light grey. And this is the sweater. And I... I think I ended up using a smaller needle. I knit this with a single strand of yarn. I One modification I always do to these ranunculus when I make them is I just do a regular cast on for me, which is the old Norwegian cast on, also known as German twisted cast on. Uh, but after that, I did follow the pattern for the the lace charts and everything. Um, I don't remember if I did some modifications to the raglan part after the yoke or not. This is not very oversized on me uh, because it has a lot tighter gauge than in the pattern. I think I might have used four millimeter needles to knit this but I don't remember. I'm sorry I'll be better next year because I've started writing down things. Um, this is a beautiful, very lightweight garment. Because I held the um, wool in it on its own without anything else, there is a bit of pilling. It's not too much and it's easy to just pick off, but there is a little bit of pilling. It bloomed so much with washing, so it went from being quite see-through to I can wear this on its own. Um, perfect for hiking if I want a light garment with me just because it is so lightweight but still it has quite a bit of warmth so this is a nice nice lightweight um I am out of words today <laughs> lightweight garment I like it what else can I say the second sweater that I finished last year was the Eben Genser by Hilsvog. I could not find it. I think my mom has the sweater. I knit it with a kit from Hilsvog. It uses the Embla yarn. I'll put a photo here so you can see it. Um, yeah. 
Then after that, I made some socks in my own my own uh, pattern, Mursel, which is some Ravelry, and I used some hedgehog fibers. Don't have those socks. I'm not gonna show socks today because I've knit a lot of socks and a lot of hats in 2022, so I'm gonna focus mainly on garments, bigger things. The next thing that I made is one of my probably top three uh, knits from last year. And it's the Billy Pullover by Sari Nordlin. And I used Macauslin Mill 2-ply yarn in the color Green Heather. And this is the sweater. And I just think it's so pretty. So it's an all-over sort of cabled cardigan. Sorry, Nordland is an amazing designer, so you should check her out if you're looking for some beautiful designs. Uh, this yarn is quite stiff. That's how I would describe it. So the sweater can almost stand on its own, it feels like, but it, I love that about it. It feels really sturdy and that it's going to last forever. I love the color of this. I just think it's so pretty um it has a beautiful heathering and i just love this sweater so much i love it so much i would love to make more um sweaters with this pattern she does have other beautiful patterns though so i might knit some of her other cable designs uh but i just think this is so pretty and it's gotten a lot of wear actually my boyfriend uh, we were looking at patterns for a sweater for him, and he did like this pattern, so maybe I'll make one for him. But he won it with a turtleneck. So yes, I knit this as to pattern, I believe. I love it. I love it. Let's see. I'm going to say that a lot today. Heads up. Then I made some more socks. Surprise. And then I did the Tulip Sweater by B Mandarins. Uh, and I used Hillesvog Unspun Roving for that, that I held double. So I didn't use Silk Mohair, I think, because when I swatched for this, uh, when I held it with Silk Mohair, the gauge was way too thick. I think even just holding the Unspun Double, my gauge was slightly bigger than recommended by a stitch or two. Um, I honestly thought that I had made this before 2022. I feel like I've had this for a long time. It's gotten a lot of wear. Uh, it's cute. It's cropped. It has the beautiful scalloping, which is a nice feminine touch to it. And it's just so warm and soft. I love this. This is what got me hooked on knitting with unspun yarns. And I've gotten braver after making this. Uh, holding with silk mohair definitely has improved my unspun game. I can knit with it a lot more comfortably than I did this one. I was quite scared when doing the scallops. Um, but yeah, no. Beautiful sweater, beautiful design, beautiful yarn. I love it. And I will tell you if I don't love something, so don't worry. I'm not going to lie. After the tulip sweater, I made a flax sweater slash dress. That's a pattern uh, by Tinka Knits, the sweater. I just elongated it and increased it. It was for a baby and it's already been gifted. And I used Baby Wool Lanette by Sandiskarn, held together with an alpaca silk by Drops. And I made a nice little marling uh, to the dress. Then I made the Ina Socks by Melody Hoffman. That was a test knit, I think. And I used Tuku Wool Fingering. I will show you that one because those are the prettiest socks that I have made. And I used them as a wall decoration because they're so pretty. <laughs> We're back. I got the socks for you guys. Look how pretty these things are. Now, I remember knitting them was a little bit of a pain just because I don't like knitting bobbles. 
Oh, but they are so pretty. And what makes me love these socks so much too is the Tuku wool. So uh, this is the Tuku wool fingering. It's not their sock base. So this is 100% finished wool. It has no nylon. It's non-superwash. And it just feels so comforting. It's, uh, it's such a wholesome feeling to have these on your feet. They're beautiful. And I love the fabric so much that I do want to make myself a sweater in this. But knitting myself a sweater on like 2.5 millimeter needles or three, uh, it, it would be an investment of time for sure, but it would be beautiful. And also, oh, it would be nice if Melody Hoffman would make a sweater pattern with this patterning. Like how cute would it be to have around the neck or like on the sleeve cuffs? Design idea right there, Melody. Would be I would make it for sure so yeah I made those and then I went on to making uh, my little secret crop by Jessie made in Aya fibers looks DK and I don't have that with me because I think it's in the wash I've actually been using them quite a lot as um like bralettes uh, underneath my scrubs. I think they're great. And then I made the hush pants by Pickles in their Pickles Cozy base. Pants, you guys. So if you want something super snuggly, I do recommend this pattern. I think I struggled a bit with the pocket um explanations in in the pattern oh look what i have in the pockets of my pants diy projects <laughs> um i think i struggled a bit with how the pocket explanations in the patterns was written up but other than that the pattern was clear and of course it's pants and it's a thicker yarn so it does use quite a bit of yarn so in that sense it's not the cheapest of projects um, because it's such a soft yarn too it's not gonna hold up the best so I did find that on the butt of the pants it did wear a bit more than the rest because you know you're sitting on it uh, but I love them I'm so happy that I made them. They're so snuggly, but I do find myself a bit worried about wearing holes in the butt of them. So I don't wear them all the time. Um, but they're so soft and they have pockets. So yeah, those are the hush pants. And I do think they come with, um, or the Pickles also has a sweatshirt with the hoodie for this pattern, if I'm not mistaken. And one of my piles just collapsed. Then I made some more socks. My own Moore's Hell pattern with stripy cat yarns in the color Hagrid. Then I made the Anson cardigan by Fine Fiber Co. And I used Holst Super Soft Cones together with Camarose Monastrola as a second yarn. Now this pattern is really cute. I don't think I would make it again though because the size range could be better. So I, I saw that after I had bought the pattern. But it is a beautiful cardigan. How do I show this properly? <laughs> There's buttons in the front and then it has a, a tie mechanism on the bottom. not good at showing this i put three buttons on it and they're like little coconut buttons which are some of my favorite buttons because they can be sewn on both ways and give a different impression i think they're so pretty and then monastrola has a gold stellina to it and it's not really picking up on camera but it has like gold gold shine to the fabric 
um, it's it's soft, but it's not the softest. Um, just because whole super soft is it isn't a super soft yarn. It's a woolly yarn. It's more rustic, and the monastrola is not like a silky soft, like a silk mohair. Um, because I believe it has wool, and I'll pack our content in it. It has and polyamide, I think. Don't hold me to it. You can Google it. But yes, it's a beautiful cardigan. But yeah, size range could be better. After making that cardigan, I made a self-drafted mohair sweater that used Gepard silk mohair tweed. And this is that sweater in a beautiful green color, which is actually showing up quite well on camera. Uh, so yeah, this is a self-drafted pattern. I think for this one, I started bottom up actually. Um, and then I used the numbers that I needed to decrease for the neck to cast on a second version that I then knit top down. It's knit on three millimeter needles, single strand of silk mohair. There's no ribbing, it's just a rolled cuff for the sleeves and the body. And then on the neckline, I think, I don't, I get unsure when it's like on such a small scale if I just bound off or if I did a tiny bit of I-cord edging. I think I just bound off. It looks like it just bound off. But yes. So this is very lightweight. I think I used 100 grams. I had uh, four balls of 25 grams. So it weighs nothing. And you can ball it up into quite a small thing to like shove in your bag if you just want to have a layering piece with you. So it's great for that. I'm sure there are some single-stranded uh, mohair patterns out there, but honestly, you could you could knit with any yarn for any pattern if you just work it out a bit. So if you find a simple sweater pattern that is knit on three millimeter needles, you could substitute that yarn with a single strand of silk mohair, make a swatch and see if you get gauge or if you need to go up or down in needle size, and then you'll have a very lightweight warm sweater. After this one, next page, I made the Gru socks by Fiber Tails in wool barn yarn. Those socks are downstairs. They get worn quite a bit just because the sock yarn is so soft. It has a cashmere content and it's just ah, so good. I love soft socks. Then I made the No Frill Sweater by Petite Knit. So we're getting into the spring summer months and I use Knit Rennie Cashmere Super Soft in the color Rusty Pekin and I held it double to get gauge. And that's here. And this is a beautiful yarn. I would like to have more of this cashmere base. I do think I have one more cone in this base. Now, I remember when I was knitting on this, I was knitting outside on my balcony because there was so much spinning oil in this that I almost got a headache from knitting with it. It was quite strong in this cone. So it might be different from cone to cone, but they do call them greasy cones, so be warned. You could always hank it up and wash it first. I didn't. I uh, balled up and um, knit with the yarn held double outside, and then I gave it several washes. So first I washed it by hand, let it soak, but still it was quite a strong scent, so I put it through the washing machine and on a wool program with wool soap and then it was good 
um, I've worn it and I still felt like it had a little bit of scent so I did wash it again and it's just getting softer and softer each time but it's holding its own like it's quite a uh, dense gauge that I knit, it, knit this on. I don't think I have shrunken it up or felted it in the machine. I don't feel like I have. The stitches are quite, um, like you can see them. They're not st stuck together the way they would if you had felted it. I think I would have liked to have made this a size bigger. Like it fits, but it's not doesn't have much positive ease and I do like to have a shirt underneath this I think it looks quite clever um and like it does yeah it's it's big enough but it could be even bigger uh if I were to make it again it still has not much it's it mostly smells like the wool wash but I think one more wash in the machine and <laughs> the spinning oils will be gone I love the feel of this yarn. I love knitting from the cones. I don't mind that they have spinning oil. They're very affordable for the amount of yarn that you get and the quality of the yarn. So I'm really happy with this one and I'd like to knit with it again, but I will make something maybe with not as tight of a gauge. I think that would also help with getting the spinning oil out that it's not so tightly knit. Uh, Rusty Pekin, beautiful color. It's blowing out. It's more like this, but yes, beautiful and such a nice soft feeling yarn. This is something that I could knit, I think, for Matias, and he would not find it scratchy. But he might not like this spinning oil, so I would have to wash it several times and try not to felt it if I were to knit something for him. After the no frills in the Knit Renny Cashmere Super Soft, I test knit the Summer Souffle by Laura Penrose. She has a YouTube podcast as well. And I used the recommended yarn, which was the KFO Cotton Merino Held Double. This is a beautiful pattern and it's been folded in my cabinet, so sorry for that. It's a beautiful pattern. It has this cute little souffle going on. She has several patterns with this souffle. Uh, a great thing about the pattern is that she has a modification so that you could knit the body to the recommended ease for yourself and then a different ease for the sleeve. So let's say you have a small bust but bigger arms. There's modifications to change the sleeve, even though you're doing a smaller circumference for the body or the other way around. So that was great. It's a circular yoke. So I think this is a good sort of basic t-shirt pattern to have if you want to, to make something that really fits you well. You don't have to do the souffle if you don't want the cuteness of it, even though it's really cute. I, uh, it's a summer yarn that, so I haven't worn it so much and that's not because of the pattern, it's more because of the yarn. Now, maybe I'm controversial for not loving KFO, <laughs> but I, I don't love this yarn. I find it a bit weird to have like a cotton merino blend I feel like either I want to be warm and then I don't want cotton in it or I want it to be a summer yarn like we don't have that much in between here it's mostly cold and then we have some really nice summer days and then away with the wool you know uh but yeah it's a beautiful top I would love to make it again but I would probably make it not with the cotton merino blend either make it with wool long sleeved I think that would be really nice for like a winter version might 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 just do that after that so we're into the proper summer knits now I made the watch cap hat by Pearl Soho I made lots of those last year and then I made the Amy slipover by Sanna Skarn it's from the pattern book Mik Tildame 
and I used Hillis Fog Unspun and Yestal Silk Mohair. Now I used one single strand of the unspun roving, but the cakes come with them held double, so I did have to unwind and ball it up before I could knit this. So it was a bit time consuming because of that, but this is hands down for sure in my top three um, knits of 2022. I love this. If I want to dress up and wear knitwear, this is what I do. Like I'll have a white shirt and I'll put this on and it's so chic. I love it. And it's so warm and so comforting. I just love the feeling of unspun on me. So lightweight, so warm, thick, but it weighs nothing. It's a warm hug. It's just, ah. I want to make more of this. I will make more of this. I am planning on making this with uh, Nutidin because Nutidin is single stranded in the cakes. So I don't have to do the un the caking it up, bowling it up. I can just start knitting it together with the silk mohair. And I just love it so much. And I get so many compliments on it and it's just so good. So I want to make more of this highly highly recommend this so if you want to get the pattern book most likely if you want to buy it from sunnyscarn you need to buy it with yarn for something but that pattern book does have a sock pattern so you could buy yarn for the socks and then i mean i made at least four things from that pattern book last year it has a lot of good patterns this one top three and a sweater that I made is also in the top three, so. Beautiful. Beautiful. After the Amy Slipover, I made a Cumulus Tea by Petite Knit, and I used Tin Line by Sanneskarn. And this got me on a Cumulus Tea craze last year. I made three, I have yarn for more. Now, this is knit on three millimeter needles because why be nice to yourself, right? <laughs> Last year, I definitely made several projects on three millimeter needles. I There's not like huge gaps in my knitting wardrobe, so I don't have to knit fast to get something. I just want to have something to knit on and a three millimeter project was great for the summer months when traveling because it would keep me busy for quite a while. And these are just so nice to wear. They have quite a deep V. I have not done I cord around the neckline on any of them because I do like the deep V. Like I said, this is for the summer when it's actually warm and you want to get some sun, at least I do, get that vitamin D with sunscreen um so i i like the way that it looks so this is the first one that i made it, i used the tin line and i made two more last year then i made the ripple bralette by jesse made in the sakami alpaca linen silk blend now, this tiny thing does fit. It's um, <laughs> quite small looking, but it's ribbed, so it's very stretchy. I use this as a bralette undergarment, like I said, under my scrubs when I have those long 25, 26 hour shifts, because if it's quiet in the evening night, we can try to sleep. And because we need to probably jump out of bed and run at any given time i sleep with the scrub zone getting to know me here so this is just a nice comfortable undergarment to not have like the wires and stuff poking so highly recommend uh if you're looking for an undergarment and you don't need support this gives you zero support so be warned then I made another one of those um, self-drafted mohair sweaters, this time in the Gephardt pink silk mohair tweed. 
So I used the numbers of the other one and this time I knit it top down. So I cast on the amount of stitches that the other one had bound off and then yeah. And then I just did raglan increases until I have the stitch count that the other one had for the sleeves and body and then just knit until I was happy with the length and ran out of yarn and then bound off and it again just has um, a rolled edge on the body. And then this time on the sleeves I apparently did an I-cord edging. Don't know why but that's what I did. I think I also did it on the body. I lied. I did it on the body too, but it is rolling up. Maybe I did it because my bind off is a lot tighter than my cast on and silk mohair doesn't really have a lot of stretch. It's like, it's there. So I think that's why I did the eye cord to make sure that it was not too tight. That's what I did though. Future me will be better with note taking. Let's see. Still not quite pitch dark outside. Then I knit another cumulus tee by Petite Knit again in the tin lina. E. This time in a white color, and I was knitting on this when in Turkey. I think I went down a size just because the other one was quite drapey over the shoulders. This one is more cropped, so this is one to only be worn in the summer. <laughs> and I did get some pink stuff on the back, which I don't know where it came from, but it's fine. It's on the back. I don't care. It's a summer top. And it's quite wrinkly, but that's okay too. I feel like this one shrunk up, but I think honestly, I was just so tired of knitting on the three millimeter needles at this point, because this one was my fourth garment on three millimeter needles at the time that I was knitting on this, because I was also knitting on another, no wait, two, three, four, this was the fifth one because I had I was also knitting on one that I finished this year, but I was knitting on it before I finished this. So quite a lot of garments on three millimeter needles. So I think I was just a little bit tired and it was a summer top. So I was like, mm, it can be cropped. It's fine. Looking back, ideally should have been a little bit longer. We're being honest. Then I made a hand towel because I was in Turkey, so I was knitting on the Colorfield hand towel by Pearl Soho, which uses linen stitch, so it's quite it takes quite a bit of time to make it. That one is in the wash right now because I am using it in my kitchen all the time. And then I made the look at my holes by James N. Watts, and I used some Turkish lilac yarn that I found which I think is a linen, linen blend. So here it is. Now this one is quite fun to wear over like a bikini top and stuff. It's definitely see-through, so it's not something that I would wear going to work. <laughs> but if I were to go to some festival, be young and hip, you know, this is something to wear. It does snag on everything though so I've snagged it quite a bit already um it's holding up okay but there is like some little things that have been snagged just a little bit uh here's like a little bit of the yarn has been snagged not all of it but it's okay there's so much going on with all these holes that it's not something that's noticeable really this was a quick knit, but it was a bit painful to knit the stitches. Um, so I would like to have more of this for the summer months. Um, definitely just the summer garment for me. 
if I were to make it with a non-summer yarn, so a animal fiber, then it could be a layering piece for the winter. But I see this mostly as a summer garment for me personally. At least because I've only made it as a summer garment this far. Then I made the Simple Bralettes by Naked Knits in KFO Cashmere. So this was quite a luxurious yarn. It's quite an expensive yarn. So it's not something that I would buy for a sweater. Um, but I did make myself this. And it's very comfortable, very soft. Um, Naked Knit has some beautiful bralette patterns. So I do recommend checking her out. It fits really great. Um, but again, it's an undergarment, so it's not something that I personally would wear as a top. It's a bralette for me. Uh, the yarn was beautiful. Yeah, happy with it. And then next page. Then I test knit that Pinassa sweater by Zola Wool in her own yarn, Zola Wood Pastoretta. And this is a beautiful top-down color work sweater. And um, it's quite a rustic yarn. So this one definitely has the, the stiffer feeling to it. The yoke is just stunning. And I did repeat... Um, some of the color work on the bottom. I don't think the pattern has that, but I just put this stitch down here into the ribbing. And it's just beautiful. Lovely pattern. And if you're not too sensitive to like wool, because this is a sheep wool, then this is a beautiful rustic yarn. Beautiful. I'm sorry if you can hear some noises. Somebody came home. Then I went to Nufjurajd, which is north of where I live, and they had a yarn store which carried uh, Navia Fipa. And uh, in the store, they had a sample of a sweater, a free sweater pattern that's been going around online in Norway. It's called Min Motegenser. And uh, it's been really popular among younger people. And I paired that together with the Sunnesgarn Tin Silk Mohair. And they didn't have enough. I saw this blue color and I just thought it was so cool. Uh, <laughs> they didn't have enough of it though. So I did get um, some white ones. And in order to have enough. I did the neckline and the shoulder puffs in the white and then I finished the body and then I divided for the sleeves and knit until I ran out and then I finished the sleeves off with the white again. So I thought that was quite cool. Now it's very warm and very soft. However, I don't wear it that much. I feel like it's a bit not my style um i like to look at this color and i do think it looks okay with my complexion but i don't know i just gravitate more towards the nature uh green browns beiges but i do think it's really pretty i think one of the reasons i also don't wear it that much is that it is just a little bit too cropped for my liking i do think i followed the pattern but it's just a little bit short and the sleeves as well are just a little bit short. So I might gift this um, to someone a bit shorter than me. Maybe. Maybe. It is really soft though. It's like oh, squish. The squish factor is real. So the, yeah, the Min Mut again, mm -mm. Beautiful yarn. Beautiful yarn though. Then I made the Ribati by Lena Maria Os in Fibra Natura Papyrus yarn. So this is some 
uh, yarn that I made the ranunculus with previously and I love that ranunculus it's a beautiful yarn I made the ribati I don't know when I put this on I don't find it to be very flattering so I don't really wear this much so maybe this is something that I will gift as well I don't think I want to unravel it and repurpose it because also the gray is just I don't know I think it makes me look a little bit bland when I put it on so yeah maybe maybe it will be gifted we'll see I finished it I think when summer was basically done here we didn't really have summer where I live it was raining all the time but that might also factor into the fact that I haven't really worn it that much. So maybe when the spring and summer comes back around, I'll put it on and see if I actually love it. Maybe I do. Maybe. Then I made my first properly steaked with a sewing machine uh, kofta. This is the pattern from... Um, it's from Rauma. They had a magazine mod 243-5 slash Dama Yake 7. Yeah. Why can't they just give them names? But yeah, it's a pattern from Rauma. I used Finul from Rauma in the color 4130 and 0401. And it's this one. And I love this one. I wear it a lot. I have it in the living room, so whenever I'm cold, I can throw this on. It's huge. It's very long. I made, um, I think I made the recommended body, but then for the sleeves, I did the length of the men's sleeve uh, so that it would align with the body because the woman's was misaligned with the patterning. So my patterning aligns with it instead of being like this, which was for the body, uh, for the sleeves of the woman's sleeve. Uh, I made the large size. I love it. Now it is definitely like, it has a bit of bulk to the shoulder seams uh, because of the steaked edges. Uh, the front also has a bit of bulk but it's fine. Uh, I think it's beautiful. It's an heirloom piece. Again, I used coconut buttons. This time I didn't use the dark side on the outside. I used the lighter side. And it's just a really, really nice colorwork kofta. And I want to make more this year. I have yarns to, to make more um, in different uh, patterns from, from Rauma. They have a lot of good Kofta book patterns. Um, oh, I just love it. It makes me feel very nostalgic Norwegian, like bringing the knitting traditions with me. My, um, what was I gonna say? I don't know. But Kuftas are very traditional Norwegian knitting and I'm happy to be following that knitting tradition as well and I'll be making more for sure um I know how to to steak it now it's still scary but I know how to do it then after that I made another cumulus tea by Petite Knit and this time I used the Bambino yarn by Viking Garn I love that yarn I highly recommend that yarn it's affordable it's a bamboo blend it's so soft you guys it's so soft even touching it now i just want to put it on and go to sleep <laughs> i have been wearing this as a night t-shirt just because it's so comfortable so i made this in like a bottle green color now this one is slightly thicker than the lina so it's not it's, it's always heavier and it's not as see-through uh the fabric it just knits up so beautifully and I have two more colors of this in my stash. So I will be knitting with this, I think, probably again 
this coming summer. It's just, it's so good. Maybe I'll make this pattern again. Maybe I'll make a different t-shirt pattern. I think I actually went down a needle size for this. So I think I knit it on 2.75 instead of three millimeters because it was a thicker yarn and to get gauged, that's what I did. Um, it's beautiful. Heavier, softer, so good. Beautiful drape, love this. Bambino by Viking Garn. If you can get your hands on it, it's worth trying it out if you're looking for a soft summer yarn. It's beautiful. Then, pa, pa, pa. I made uh, the Oak Beanie by Vera Valmaki in Hodgepodge Merino. I have it to show you, it's somewhere in the next pile. Then I finished my second half and half triangles wrap by Pearl Soho in oatmeal gray and turmeric yellow. That's the linen quill base that's recommended in this free pattern by Pearl Soho. Now that one is at the cabin, but I did bring the first one that I made because it does have the oatmeal gray as well. So this is one of the colors of the, the half and half wraps. Now, um, this is definitely not the same color, but you can get the idea. It's two triangles knit together into a big shawl. This is the first one that I knit. Uh, this is the large size, the turmeric yellow one that I'd knit. I think I used 230 stitches and I got away with using two skeins for one triangle, but the second triangle I needed to break into a third skein. So maybe if I would have made it even smaller, I could have gotten away with just two skeins. Um, I love these. I've just finished a third one and I'll be casting on a fourth one once I can decide on the colors. Uh, I do see that the, the linen quill is starting to pill a bit, but considering just how much this has been worn for the past two years, it's holding up quite well. All right, then I made uh, the ranunculus. <laughs> by Midori Hirose again, this time a summer version, using the Asher Old Barn, which was a knit crate yarn. So knit crate no longer exists, unfortunately, they went bankrupt, but this was a yarn that they sent last year. I made this t-shirt with two skeins. I believe it's a DK. Uh, has some variations to the coloring, but it's not speckled. Um, there isn't really any pooling going on. And I don't think I alternated skeins, so it was quite good. But yes, so you can't get this yarn anymore, but this is the Ranunculus as a t-shirt version in a summer yarn. Again, I use the old Norwegian cast on also known as the german twisted cast on then moved on to the yoke the raglan after the raglan i don't follow the sleeve instructions i do a few rows of stockinette before doing a ribbing just because i do want the sleeves to be a little bit longer than the short sleeve version in the pattern so yes this is really nice uh to have in the summer, don't really wear it in the winter, but once the denim shorts are back on, I'll be wearing this again. I think we're moving into the fall. I made a watch cap hat after this, and then I made the Guernsey Genster by Sanneskarn. And this is also from the magazine Myk til Dame. For this one, I used Nutiden uh, held double in the color Grud together with Isayer silk mohair in a very similar color. And this is on my top three lists in 2022 as well. I love this sweater. I love it a lot more than I thought I would love it. The color, I'm obsessed with it and I want to make many more things in this like 
light green grass colorway. Um, it's huge. It's so big. I thought when I made this that, oh man, it's too big. But honestly, I am loving how big and oversized it is. It's putting on like a tent that hugs you in a good way. It's just amazing. I can't recommend this pattern enough. Uh, you can get a similar pattern from Petite Nate, but I honestly love this Guernsey get a against a pattern. I love the oversized fit of it. It worked really well with the double nuted and the silk mohair. It's just great. And I want more. And I might make more in the future. I might make it with uh, the Hillesvog unspun because that one's already already comes with two strands and it's more affordable and more easily accessible. Um, I ran out of yarn for this and I was saved by one of you beautiful viewers. Uh, but it's probably safer for this big of a project to, if I were to make it again, to knit it with uh, the Hillesvog, which is more accessible uh, than knitted in. But oh, it's so pretty. Hmm. So two of my three favorite knits from last year were from the same pattern book using unspun yarn for both of them. Neither of the patterns were intended to use unspun. That's not the recommended yarn, but I used it. And maybe I'll do more knits in the future using unspun instead of the recommended. Now, I rarely use the recommended yarn. I like to see what I have in my stash and go with that. And it works out really well for me, usually. Ah, but yeah, love this one. Love it. Love it. Then I made the Sugar Boo by Bralette by Kadri, and I used Woolen Knit Erin yarns for this in the color Rust. So this yarn was gifted for a collaboration that I did with them last year, and they sent me two balls of their Erin British wool. And it was just enough to make this bralette. This is the Sugar Boo, Bru Sh Sugar Boo Bralette by Kadri. I did knit it just a bit shorter because I ran out of yarn. I could have done the ribbing in a white color because they sent a cone of white. And I think that would have been really cool as well. But I made it with what I had in the rest. It fits really well made sure to redo the bind off so that it's more stretchy and every time i've gone cross-country skiing since finishing this i've been wearing this instead of a sports bra and i love it it's um definitely rustic but i don't react to it and it's a really nice warm layer protecting the precious when going skiing so i want to make more i have that white cone so maybe i'll just make some in white. Surprised by how much I wear this, actually. I was worried that it would be scratchy, but like I can feel it when I put it on, but once it's on my body, I'm good. Then I made the Francis Pullover by Mint Knitwear using Woolen Knit British Wool for ply in the cinnamon colored cone together with Rauma alpaca silk, which was from my stash, while the cone was gifted. But I also had already bought the cone in that color because I love that color, so yeah. But yes, this is the Francis Pullover. It's uh, knit top down and it's a textured yoke, which you can see here. And I learned some new techniques making this. And it's just so pretty. So I followed the bobble instructions and then I fudged a bit on the next row to um, tighten it up on afterwards. And I find that they're just so perky. So I will definitely go back and do those for future bobbles. Ah, oh, beautiful, beautiful. I don't think I did any modifications. Maybe the sleeves. I don't remember if her sleeves 
were knit straight or if they had shaping, but I just knit them straight and had a long ribbing. I didn't do any decreases. I like that for sleeves. I like them to just go straight. Same with the body. I don't like to do decreases before the ribbing. I just want it to go straight. And I often don't go down a needle size for the ribbing. I might for the neck, I will because you want it to cinch in on the neck, but I don't want it on the cuffs or the bottom hem. So I usually don't size down. And I'll block it to go straight as well. Then next page. Or not. Yes. Then I did another oak beanie by Vera Malimaki. Vera Mal Valimaki. In the hodgepodge merino. So I made two of these last year. And I just love it. I love these two so much. They're the chunkiest hats that I made last year. And I am gravitating towards them quite a bit. There's something about the chunkiness. I think it's very in right now and I like how it looks. Then I made two watch cap hats by Pearl Soho in the House of Yarn Inca. These two. So I made one bigger and one smaller, one for me and one to gift. But I ended up making more gifts than I needed for people I wanted to give knit, knitted gifts for last year. So I still have have one of them in like my ready to go gift basket. And this is also a very nice yarn to wear. It's not, I don't find it itchy at all. Uh, it does stretch a bit though I'm finding so it's not um, it doesn't hold its shape up as well as this one does this one again I knitted one for me and one to gift then I made two Nelike blankets using magic cake Elise yarn in the ombre batik and I made one that I've gifted for my friend who had her baby in like a light blue minty color and then I made another one which I am keeping for future me or someone else who knows but I just thought it was so pretty how it, the cake on its own gradually changed color I just thought it was so beautiful like you can see they're quite stark from end to end but it's a nice gradual change and the stitch is quite easy to remember. Once I did a few rows, I could do it without having to look at the pattern. Um, it's a free pattern, Nelike blanket, I think by hobby. And yeah, beautiful summer knit. Then I made the my own pattern, the Moors Hell socks again, <laughs> using hodgepodge. No, hedgehog sock yarn for that one. And then I made the unarmored defense cowl by Cat Weaver. And I've gifted that one to my mother for Christmas. The dandelion pullover by Paula Pereira. I actually knit earlier in the year, but I forgot to write it in my YouTube notes. So that's why it's appearing later in this episode. I knit the dandelion pullover in murky depths and Isayer silk mohair. This is also a top-down sweater with a textured yoke. Now this was a bit annoying to knit. There were several stitches in this that was not the most fun if I remember, but it's a beautiful result. I think it would pop even more if I were to have used a different yarn and not held it with a silk mohair, but it is beautiful. It's just not, from a distance, you can't really see all the work that went into it, uh, but yeah, no, it's really pretty. It's a really pretty pattern. If I were to knit it again, probably use a DK weight yarn and not a fingering with silk mohair. 
It feels really nice and soft though, and I did make a pair of socks with uh, with the leftovers. Um, made another watch cap hat by Pearl Soho. Then I made two sock tubes with cutting heels that were gifted for Christmas for my brothers. Then I made another uh, pair of socks for me. I can show you. So these were made with the leftovers from the dandelion pullover. So these are my own sock pattern, Moore's Hell socks, which holds fingering with silk mohair. And they're just so nice and soft and squishy. Really good socks for wearing in the house or to bed, but because of the silk mohair, they are actually quite sturdy, so I could easily wear them in my boots as well. I don't think it'll be a problem. I've done that before with a different pair of socks with that combination of yarn, and it's it's great. And then I made two Druid's Hearth water bottle, water bottle covers by Cat Weaver. Both were gifted for Christmas. And then I made another water bottle uh, over Christmas using the Advent Swap with scraps from Amy Palco, and that's at the cabin. Then I made another cowl, that's at the cabin. Another cowl, that's at the cabin. Then I made the Copenhagen cardigan by Petite Knit in a size large. I used wool in it four ply in Loden green together with the Drops Kid Silk in a similar green color. Now this cardigan has gotten a lot of wear. It's just a really classic cardigan. Uh, it fits really well. It has pockets, which is always convenient. They would be more practical if they were bigger and deeper, but they're good to put something in just for a little bit if you don't have your hands free. You can, I can put my phone in there and then that's okay, but I can't wear my phone in there all day. It'll fall out. Yeah. I did not put buttons on it. Um, the button band is knit together with a cardigan and you're supposed to make the holes afterwards and sew the buttons on, but I've just kept it as it is because I don't find I would close the buttons either way. It's a layering piece for me and I just like how it looks without it. Now the button band does roll in on itself. If I were to make this again, I might make uh, the button band a bit wider, so add some more stitches to it in hopes of it not rolling in on itself as much as it does. Really like the yarn combination of the British wool four ply together with Drops Silk Mohair. Uh, it holds up really well. It's a beautiful fabric. It's warm. Uh, it's sturdy and there's minimal pilling going on and I've worn this quite a lot. This has gotten quite a bit of wear. So yeah, really happy with this. I might make more in the future. And another sweater that I forgot to write in my YouTube notes throughout the year is the Frankie Genser by Sannesgarn, again from the pattern book Mik til Dame. And I used some stash yarn that I had bought in Riga years ago. And this is the sweater. It's very bright. Matthias loves this color on me. <laughs> I think he thinks I wear too much green and rust. So when I put on this, it's a pop of color. So he sees me <laughs> when I wear this. I'm like a light and in your face kind of color. Um, but it's beautiful. It's oversized. It's soft. It's very bright. <laughs> I do like it. I do like this color. Um, I do need to block it and stretch the border, or the ribbing out on the bottom because it is cinching in a bit. And like I said, I prefer it to just go straight down. Uh, but I washed it and then I didn't do that last time. I didn't block it properly. But yes, the Frankie Genser. 
So that was all of the garments and things that I made in 2022 that I have to show you guys. I hope it was a nice little recap, maybe a bit of inspiration. And for me, it's a, a nice journal to look back on and see what I made in the past year and what I think about it, if I forget in the future. <laughs> uh, I hope you're well. I hope you're knitting all the things that make you happy because that's why we're doing this. At least that's why I'm doing this. And um, I will talk to you soon. Bye.